And good evening, New Mexico. You never really know who sits in front of you or behind you or beside you when you get on a plane or a train, or for that matter, what they're carrying in their bag. That's a fact countless traumatized train passengers will not forget after a recent ride across our state straight out of a horror movie. Julie Friendak is here to break down what happened, and Julie, this story has a lot of layers to it. Yeah, it does, but it all started on a cross-country train ride from Los Angeles to Chicago. Witnesses watched one man stab another with a machete as the train approached the Albuquerque metro. But the man police initially believed was the victim turned out to be something else. Did you see anything? Were you in that back cart? An Amtrak train turned into a crime scene in the middle of the New Mexico desert. He just got straight up and just bam. Okay. He didn't even look at him down there. He just went bam. That's what he did. Multiple witnesses explained the ride from hell last month to New Mexico State Police. And I quickly turned over and saw the guy in the back hunching over the seat with the, the knife in his hand like this. The first thing I saw was him over the seat. I didn't see the knife until he pulled back with it. Stay inside. An older man who witnesses say was talking to himself throughout the entire overnight ride allegedly stabbed a younger man sitting in front of him. He just got up and stabbed. He didn't, he, he don't care where he stabbed him at. He just got up because he could have had him in the head. You know, he just got up. He couldn't even see him because he was laying down like this and the seats are so high. So he just got up. And Lapel video shows Amtrak workers explaining the victim's injuries, a large cut to the face, and serious injuries to one hand. They tended to him while they waited for first responders. He asked if he could get his phone and his luggage. I said, no, you're severely hurt right now. Um, can't have that happen. He's like, well, can you go get it? The worker said yes, not expecting the next twist in this ride. The conductor went to reach for his bag, and as immediately as soon as he touched it, he's like, no, we're not moving this. And I was like, why? He's like, I can feel what's in there. He brought it down to, the, to one of the seats, and when he opened it, it was like these large gallon bags of like a crystallized substance. And he's like, that's math. And I was like, oh. The conductor later told state police the same story. I grabbed the bag that the one guy said, and I zipped it open. It's like, I mean, it's just great big bags of meth like that. I opened it up. Multiple security cameras from the Los Angeles train station show the stabbing victim with the black duffel bag in question inside the station and boarding the train. Oh, no, right, here. Here. Oh, right here? Yeah, it's right here. That's all right. Which seat? So, oh, blood. Lapel camera shows his hat and water bottle in the seat. Where are you coming from, Gerald? Yeah, there. Hours later, investigators sit down with both men, who both admitted they didn't know each other. First, the suspected attacker. He kept on running. You see, he kept running. Why was he running? I guess because I get that head. I guess because that head stuck him. You stuck him? What does that mean? Then, the victim turned suspected drug trafficker from a bed at UNM Hospital. There's some stuff inside that black bag, and I think you know. Well, I'll tell you what, man. So, there's a very large quantity of drugs inside that bag. Hear that, dude? It's your heart rate going up, dog. That's your heart rate shooting through the roof, man. One of the investigators pointed out what any one of the witnesses on board could have been thinking. This psycho dude hadn't been sitting behind you, smashed you, snatch it, or uh, a machete. Like, none of this can happen. It's fed weight. You're looking at fed time. Lapel camera video shows investigators explain they arrested the attacker for attempted murder and the stabbing victim on federal drug charges. We weren't able to identify either of them, so we don't know the status of those charges or if either of them are still in New Mexico. Tessa. I mean, a great job, Julie, telling that story with all those twists and turns there. Okay, we'll yeah. be following it, that's for sure. Thanks.